Hey guys, it's West Ventura Concepts. Today I got a little fun video for you today. What we're going to do is review a new 21.5 spec motor uh, that I picked up from R1 Works. It's their new uh, V21 HD 21.5 spec motor. The particular model that we'll be reviewing and testing today uh, is the one with the hand-picked stator and aligned uh, timing sensors. So without further ado, let's get started. All right, in this review today, as I said, we'll be covering the R1 Works V21 HD 21.5 spec uh, motor. In this case, this particular model has uh, the aligned sensor and the handpick stator. So this review today will be actually part one of, of two parts. Uh, today we'll be covering, uh, taking a look at some of the specs of the motor and just ensure that you know we believe it's actually within board compliance. Uh, as well as we'll go ahead and run it on the motorizer and uh, see what kind of power this thing makes. So let's get started. All right, the first thing we're gonna do is check the overall weight um, of the motor. Now R1 also has a short stack uh, 21.5. This one isn't the short stack uh, variant. So we'll see what it weighs. It comes in right at 149 grams. So. Uh, I would say this is not on the, it's definitely not on the lower end of the spectrum, but it's not the heaviest uh, motor that I've weighed. So I would say this is a good weight. It's going to be competitive. All right, the next thing we're going to take a look at is resistance of the stator. Now, I don't have the exact equipment that Roar uses for their testing, um, but I do know the spec. So uh, the spec is a minimum of 54.6 milliohms between any of the poles um, on the brushless motor and this is just for the 21.5s now from what i understand there's some kind of variance allowed in there for production purposes i don't really understand how all that works but i do know that this particular motor uh, because it is the align sensor and handpick stator version they actually provide uh, some value so this one has an average of 54.27 milliohms which is really low and it's actually under uh, the roar spec now that may be legal um, depending on, you know, like I said, production variances, I think if somebody could chime in on the comments here on, uh, what the raw rules are there and, you know, whether or not this motor is uh, legal. So I do know all the other R1, uh, variants of the V21 are war approved. So I would assume that, uh, this one will also be war approved. So the next thing we're going to do is check the um, overall dimensions of the motor. Now, uh, since I can't hold a camera and check it at the same time, I've actually already checked this with my ProTech um, calipers. So, took some notes here. We can take a look. Um, the outer diameter of the motor must be between 34 and 36.02 millimeters, and it actually came in at 35.98 millimeters. So, uh, that's really good. You want them as uh, wide as possible. Um, length has to be between 50 and 53 millimeters. This one came in at 52.4 uh, millimeters. Uh, the stator length, which is a really critical measurement for power, um, you want that actually, I believe, as uh, short as possible. This one came out to 19.58 millimeters, which is on the really low end of the spectrum. It has to be between 19.3 and 21 uh, millimeters. Uh, and we already checked the weight. So I would say overall in dimensions, it looks like a great uh, motor. All right, the next thing we're going to do is put this uh, R1 Works uh, V21 HD 21.5 motor on the motor analyzer. Uh, this is a Sky RC model. It's not the official motorizer that um, Roar uses for testing. But um, before I started here, the first thing I did is I put a few drops of uh, motor bearing oil um, in the bearings just because it's straight from the factory and they're probably pre lubricated, but I always Something I like to do is just lubricate them anyway. And I checked the shimming. The shimming was actually on point and did not need to be adjusted at all, which is uh, really impressive. Not a lot of other manufacturers out there have their shimming exactly, you know, where I like it, which is pretty tight towards that, uh, the timing board. You know, ideally you want those shims to be as minimum 
as possible, allowing for some heat expansion in there. So uh, the first thing we're going to do is check the kill volts and RPMs. Um, I have, I'm using a uh, Protec uh, stick pack. It's a 6300 2S LiPo battery charged to 8.4 uh, volts. So let's see what it can do. So it made 2,402 kilovolts at uh, 20,179 RPMs. Um, the amp draw was right at 6.0 volts, and as I said, or sorry, amps, and then the volts are right at 8.4. So I believe that's a very strong result. I haven't tested another 21.5. I'd like to hear what your thoughts are uh, in the comments below. So the next thing we're going to test here is the motor timing. Um, this is supposed to have the aligned sensor board, so um, it's guaranteed to be within two degrees from pole to pole. So let's see what it can do. Forty-five degrees average timing, 44, 46, 44. So it's within the spec uh, that R1 Works provides for the aligned uh, sensors. So one of the things I wanted to cover is just some of the cool features of the motor um, as it's physically designed. Um, I do like how it has a somewhat heavy duty case so you don't have to really worry about the stator coming loose. I know it's been a problem on uh, some of the modern um, spec motors trying to reduce weight as much as possible um, and you know especially for off-road applications this one will be going in my um, you can MTC 2R touring car but um, you know you see the stators kind of come unglued I don't think that's gonna be a problem with this new R1 um, some of the other features I like about it is it's got some cool nice machine uh, chamfering on the end bell uh, for lightweight design you can see and airflow uh, it's very open so I think this motor will run a little bit cooler um, I do like how all the screws and it's kind of hard to see here but all the screws have uh, the R1 logo actually um, printed on them and you can see that on the uh, end bell as well so all the screws are like that um, it does have a, a nice uh, pretty much sunken in uh, sensor connector board um, one thing that I'm not a huge fan of is the timing adjustment here so it's kind of hard to see but um, it's a very very small uh, window in there it's just kind of hard to see um, the timing adjustment so um, R1, if you see this, you know, maybe try to open that up a little bit more so you can actually see, you know, more than just like 8 to 10 degrees of timing uh, total on there. You know, I'd like to see the full 40 or 50 if possible. So that's an opportunity. Um, I do like how the, um, the soldering tabs are nice and flat, so it's a good surface to solder onto. And, uh, you know, overall... I think it's a, a great design motor. Now there is some opportunity to upgrade this and get a little more RPM on it. You could put some ceramic bearings in it um, as well as you could do um, titanium um, screws for the motor. So uh, the steel can interact with the magnets and usually when you go to titanium you can get anywhere from 200 to at most maybe 500 RPMs more out of the motor. So that's something I'll be taking a look at and seeing if those are available. Um, if you have a spec motor, highly recommend doing that. So anyway, very nice motor. Can't wait to try it. All right. Well, thank you for watching part one of this R1 Works V21 HD 21.5 spec motor uh, re test and review. Um, part two of this, we will actually install it um, in my Mugen MTC 2R touring car <clears throat> and take it for some laps and see what we think. So um, I'm only guessing with my gearing initially here, so it may... Uh, take a little bit till we can kind of get this thing uh, in a good spot with gearing and then we can really see how much faster it is um, on the track so until the next one please like and subscribe thanks for watching